In this video, we're going to talk about accounting for inventory flow using a few different inventory assumptions in accounting. So there's kind of four ways that you could uh, account for the inventory flow. First one is pretty straightforward, specific identification. This usually happens, specific identification of each inventory item, it happens when you actually track every single inventory item and you know where it is, all right? So this usually happens with expensive things, all right? So if you're selling McLaren cars, these are not cheap, these are expensive. And so they know where all their cars are in their inventory. They don't lose a car. Like it's just, they, they just track them all and they say, you've got six, right? And that's a ton of money, right? So specific identification is usually used on expensive inventory or inventory that is very unique, uniquely identifiable. And it matches the, the, the specific identification where it is matches the actual flow. So if you have a specific like, you know, a, a, a red McLaren, whatever series, that car will trace all the way through your inventory until it's sold. And when you have a cost of goods sold, it will represent that actual car that's sold. Um, most inventories don't work like that. A lot of inventories are, you know, just, they just don't, they don't work like that. Uh, they, there's a lot of items that are not as that expensive. And as a result, we have more simplified assumptions associated with inventory flow and with accounting. All right, so the first one that we're going to talk about is a weighted average costing. So this is an assumption that we'll get into in a sec. But weighted average co costing is an average costing of the inventory over time based on what's in your inventory. Uh, FIFO is the principle of first in, first out. And LIFO is the principle of last in, first out. So these inventory, these last three are really the focus of a lot of questions. And the reason why is because it's a lot of companies follow the, these three ways and you just need to know the differences of what's going on because it impacts the income statement uh, considerably given certain economic environments and certain decisions that the company makes. So uh, an important thing to note is none of these assumptions about the accounting and how things are happening needs to match the actual flow. That can be like that can be really tough for some of you guys because you'll think about it and you'll really always want to match things to the physical flow and say, oh, this is how it's done. And even in my examples that I'm about to give, I'm illustrating the principle by showing how it would match the inventory flow. That said, it is not a requirement that the inventory assumption used to account for the inventory match the actual flow of the inventory. There's no requirement there. All right. All right, so how we're gonna look at this is we're gonna use the Blue's original frozen banana stand uh, to look at frozen banana inventory. If you've ever been to Balboa and gotten a frozen banana dipped in chocolate and that's, oh, it's so good, it's so good. It's one of my mom's favorite things. All right, so there's always money in the banana stand is what they always said. And there's a family, uh, this is from the TV show Arrested Development. If you ever watch it, you have to watch more than four episodes because if you watch the first three you're gonna go uh, it's kind of stupid but by the fourth episode they start pulling jokes back from the first ones and it's hilarious at least i found it's i found it funny so uh there's always money in the banana stand is is what they always say uh in there and they have a banana stand where they sell these frozen bananas in balboa so let's assume the following uh from blue's frozen banana stand. And for the sake of the example, let's assume all the inventory is frozen and will keep over time. All right. So don't, let's not get into the nuance of bananas getting old, although we all are familiar with that process. Okay. So let's assume we can freeze these bananas and they'll keep over this time period for this example. Okay. So the banana, the banana stand purchased 4,000 bananas for 10 cents a piece on June 20th for $400. July 3rd, they purchased 3,000 3, bananas at 90 cents a piece. That's a pretty big increase in price for $2,700. All right. So 4,000 bananas at 10 cents a piece, 3,000 bananas at 90 cents a piece. And uh, the different amounts paid there respectively of 400 and 2,700. On July 4th, the banana stand sold 1,000 frozen bananas at $2 a banana for $2,000, okay? So they purchased a lot of bananas and then they sold a thousand of these bananas. And the question is, is well, how do we account for this? What do we do? 
Well, if we wanted to know the cash flow, this is pretty straightforward. Very straightforward. This is fact. Cash, that's why we love cash flows. Cash flow is fact. It is this is how much cash we gave, this is how much we give. Boom. There's no no different assumptions on here. So we lost $400 when we purchased $400 in cash when we purchased the bananas in the sense that we lost the cash and we got those bananas. So we got bananas, we gave cash. We also gave cash of $2,700 when we bought the other set of bananas. And so we got bananas and we gave cash. So a total outflow of cash of $3,100. And then we had an inflow of cash of $2,000. So the net balance from the cash out and cash in is a net loss of cash of $1,100 where cash uh, was basically, that cash was the excess bananas that we, we were getting. Net income, I mean, this is nice for the cash flow. That's fact, it's just there. What we do is we get the accrual. We wanna know the economics of what's going on. How much money did we make based on each banana we sold? Because we're not assuming that any of these bananas are lost. We're assuming that, you know, we could we still, we have more days beyond July 4th that we can sell these bananas. Okay, we're interested in knowing what the profit was uh, from this, from selling each banana. Which bananas did we sell? Did we sell the bananas that were priced at 10 cents a piece or did we sell the bananas that were priced at 90 cents? That makes a difference. It's a difference of 80 cents per banana that we sold on, on what our profit's gonna be. And herein lies the difference on inventory management and inventory costing system. It's the difference between these. And so we're gonna go through this example by going through different characters from the Bluth family, assuming that they were running the show. Remember, these are just assumptions for accounting. There is no requirement in any rule anywhere that says the inventory method must match the actual flow of inventory. First in, first out. This is the one where uh, we assume that uh, George Michael Bluth is running the banana stand. Now, George Michael is like the nicest guy on the show, and he's just a really kind person. And so he's pretty organized also. And, and what we assume is that when he's running the banana stand, he's trying to get rid of the old bananas first, the, the ones that were purchased, the, the first ones purchased and get them out the door first. Hence the name, first in, first out. If you look at this little ball thing that we have right here, it shows the number one ball is the first ball going in and it goes, it's kind of like going down a tube. It'll be the first one in and it'll be the first one out. And that's how the inventory flows. The first bananas into their inventory of bananas will be the first ones sold. And if you're not familiar with the rest of the development or you don't like the show, it's it's kind of like Jerry from Seinfeld. Jerry is very organized, very clean. He's the type of guy that throws away a shoe if a shoelace hits the bathroom floor. So uh, uh, Jerry is very clean, very clean guy. And so he's very he's very similar to this in the sense that he'd be very organized, get rid of the oldest ones first and keep the newest ones in your inventory. So if we have George Michael Bluth doing this, uh, this uh, the, inventory flow, the inventory flow is organized and sells the oldest items first. Well, that means we sold all of the June 20th items because June becomes is before July. And we would be selling the 10 cents a piece bananas for $2, right? So that's the inventory that we sold. Well, what does that end up being? Well, a thousand bananas at 10 cents a piece uh, is a hundred dollars for cost of goods sold. Our revenues are $2,000. So our profit under George Michael is $1,900 for that day. LIFO is a different methodology. LIFO is last in, first out. And when you think about LIFO, you just, if you need to remember it, I just think of it as lazy. The reason why I think of it as lazy is because I, I think of somebody going into an inventory, like a like a warehouse or a, a, a room, and just picking up the first thing that they see, which is most likely the last thing that was dropped off in the, in the office. Last in, first out means the last bananas you purchase, the most recent ones, those are the ones you're going to sell. And I liken this to uh, George Oscar Bluth. We call him Job. He's the laziest guy in the show. He never works. It's part of the joke. He never works, but he always wants credit for it. And he's similar to George Costanza from Seinfeld in the sense that they're both kind of lazy, useless people. When, when, uh, when George Oscar Bluth is operating the banana stand, if you could imagine the banana stand having a freezer, what George Michael was doing was he was specifically going down to the bottom of the freezer to make sure he got the oldest bananas that 
you imagine they just pour new bananas on the freezer. George Michael, George Michael was going down to the bottom to pull it out. George Oscar Bluth or Job, he's lazy. He's not digging down to the bottom of there to get the oldest ones. He doesn't want to get his hand all done. He's lazy. He just grabs the ones from the top, which are the most freshest ones, the ones that are just frozen and put in, right? So Job and George, they're lazy. They just grab the one from the top. And that's kind of how you think of this inventory management system. The LIFO is the, the last one in, this number four, is going to be the first one out. Last one in, first one out. So how does this apply to our example? Well, if he takes the most recent purchases, and those are the bananas he sells because he's lazy and he just gets the easiest banana to grab, which is the, mo the, the one that's closest on that freezer, then the bananas that were bought for 90 cents a piece are the ones that we sold. And the thousand bananas we have are the bananas that, that we, the thousand bananas we sold are priced at 90 cents a piece in our cost of goods sold. So we take a thousand times 90 cents is $900. And that is our cost of goods sold. Our revenue is $2,000. Our cost of goods sold is $900. And our total profit is $1,100. Now, this last one is the weighted average cost method. And Buster Bluth is the best example of this. Weighted average cost method is just kind of like a mess around of the whole thing. All right. One person was really lazy. They were grabbing off the top, the bananas from the top. The other person was very, very like fastidious. They basically went to the bottom and they were grabbing the, the oldest ones to make sure they got rid of that oldest in inventory. Buster's all over the place, especially if he's had any juice. All right. So Buster's all over the place. Sometimes he's grabbing from the top. Sometimes he's grabbing from the bottom. Sometimes he's grabbing from the middle. We have no idea what Buster's doing because he's just all over the place. And he's kind of like, uh, he's kind of like Cosmo Kramer in that way. So the beginning inventory, how we think about it is we have our beginning inventory. If you look at down here at this example, Beginning inventory re is represented by these uh, tan boxes. And then we add purchases to this inventory. And what we do is we say, okay, we have beginning inventory that was purchased and then we add some purchases to it. Um, and we can't tell what was sold. So we're just gonna peanut butter spread the costs around. We're gonna take the total dollar amount and we're just gonna spread that over every inventory item. So every inventory item is gonna be cost the same. So it's in, an in-between, it's a pricing the, the inventory basically in between the lowest cost and the highest cost for over that, over that period. And it's taking the average weighted cost of all uh, the inventory items. And then we just use that for our inventory that we sold. Remember, this is not tracking actual flow. This is just an assumption of what's going on with the inventory. So with Buster Bluth, he's chaotic. He follows no rhyme or reason to pulling items or new old items or new items in a random draw. All right. So he takes from everywhere. As a result, we have to get an average. If we take the total inventory available for sale by adding the $400 to this $2,700, we get $3,100. Then we take that balance and we divide it by the total number of items. So $3,100 divided by the number of items we have available to sell, which is 7,000. Well, the, if we take that, we're going to get an average price, an average cost, and it's going to be 44 cents. So we take this 44 cents, it's 44 and, you know, 4428. So we take that amount and we multiply it by 1,000 and we get 443 a rounding up of our cost of goods sold. So we have our revenues and our cost of goods sold. We subtract the two and we end up with a gross profit of 1,557. So here on a side by side, we have all the same things like this is the same banana stand, but we don't know who was running it, but whoever was running it would have totally different bananas that they sold. Okay. So the cash flow, that's constant. We know that that's, that's set in stone, but the accrual basis that we could use, we could use this first in first out this the cruel basis that we could use. So it could be Buster Bluth. We have a weighted average cost of $443 revenue and cost of goods sold. If revenue of 2000 cost of goods sold is $443, we're going to have a gross profit of 1,557. That's going to be the value of what we, what we earn during the period. If we do weighted average costing, if we do LIFO, we're going to be using the most current prices. And so our cost of goods sold is going to be higher because the prices were increasing uh, during this time period. So the revenue is gonna be $2,000. The cost of goods sold is gonna be $900. And the net difference of that is $1,100. You'll notice it's about $457 difference between 
LIFO and the weighted average cost. So the weighted average cost, we would report a higher income. And then FIFO. FIFO is we take the oldest inventory, we sell that first. And so under FIFO, we have 1,000 items sold times 10 cents equals $100 in cost of goods sold. We have revenue of $2,000 and the net difference is 1,900. And you'll notice there's a difference here between the gross, gross profit and it matters what we choose. And it will matter in our assumptions of what's, what's happening and what's in our inventory on our balance sheet and what's in our profit on our income statement. Now, none of these is necessarily right or wrong, um, but knowing the difference is incredibly important for understanding what's going on in the financial statement. So you have to understand what the differences are between these. Moreover, you kind of have to understand the differences in rising and declining prices of what's happening because each one's going to get you something different. FIFO and LIFO are always at the extremes and the weighted average cost is usually always in the middle. FIFO and LIFO are always at the extremes and the weighted average cost, because it's an average, is always usually in the middle of wherever that profit or wherever those valuations end up. So here's some examples of inventory methods that are, are mentioned in footnotes. Inventory valuation, uh, inventory valuation, inventory valuation is the subcategory. Inventories are valued at the lower of cost or market value. Product related to inventories are primarily maintained in the first in, first out method. This is for Pro Procter & Gamble. Minor amounts of product inventories, including certain cosmetics, commodities, are maintained at the last in, first out method. The cost of spare part inventories is maintained using the average cost method. Under L'Oreal, inventories are valued at the lower of cost or net realizable value. Costs are calculated using weighted average cost method for L'Oreal. This is another one for Colgate Palm Olive. Inventories and, uh, are stated at the lower of cost or market. The cost of approximately 80% of the inventories is determined using first in, first out. And the cost of all other inventories, predominantly in the U.S. and Mexico, is determined last in, first out method. So LIFO and FIFO. It's important to note that we'll talk about this later, but internationally, they don't allow you to use LIFO methodology for valuing inventory. So LIFO is a uniquely a unique thing to the United States. It's important to understand these assumptions. So basically, the illustration we went through shows you that it's important to understand the assumptions of accounting and the assumptions that are being made about the inventory. And it helps you if you just like sit back and think, well, what assumptions are being made in this financial statement? When you tackle a new financial statement, you want to know what assumptions are being made about income and what assumptions are made are about your cost of goods sold and the related inventory. And then finally, these are assumptions. There's no requirement that inventory method match the actual flow of inventory.